Welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining the webinar today. Uh, we're going to be discussing the role uh, manual therapy plays in early injury recovery. Next slide. Our agenda, we're going to be talking about important considerations, uh, top musculoskeletal injuries and their causes, what prolongs return to work, unpacking physical therapy, a typical therapy visit, what manual therapy means, what manual therapy does, we're going to talk about some reasons manual therapy is effective and why it all matters. Uh, we'll then get into the early intervention treatment model, early intervention manual therapy. We'll go through a couple of case studies, some key takeaways, and then we'll have a Q&A period. Next slide. So how do we provide physical therapy services during a pandemic? By following uh, CDC guidelines and strict protocols. Concentra has implemented many safety measures to ensure patients can receive the care they need. Patient screening questionnaires, temperature checks for patients and employees, mandatory masks for patient and employees, eye protection for employees, and stringent cleaning standards. Despite the concerns with COVID-19, Concentra therapists will provide all necessary treatment, including manual therapy. Next slide. Some important considerations. Um, for patients that are not comfortable or cannot do treatment in person, Concentra provides a tele-rehab option. Although not always as effective as in-person therapy, it is better than not receiving care at all. Concentra therapists can ex uh, assess range of motion and movement limitations and conduct a thorough history through the tele-rehab platform. Patients are issued a customized home exercise program and complete the exercises during a live video treatment session with the therapist. It's also important to remember that uh, you need to evaluate each state's practice act to determine if tele-rehab is an option. Next slide. Some of the top musculoskeletal injuries and their causes. Um, sprains, when a ligament is stretched beyond uh, its limit, typically from twisting motions of a joint. A strain, when muscle fibers pull apart, typically from overexertion over of the muscle. Repetitive motion, when muscle tendon fibers wear out over time due, due to repeated use. An example of this might be tennis elbow or uh, a knee uh, overuse injury. Uh, and then there's acute joint restrictions, uh, when a joint becomes jammed, uh, can be from trauma or movement, often diagnosed as a sprain or a strain, but can cause immediate, intense acute pain with significant strength and motion limitations. Next. Some of the top musculoskeletal injuries and their causes. Um, the top musculoskeletal injuries that we see are usually due from poor ergonomics, awkward postures, uh, required overtime and productivity demands. We, we see a lot of that in the warehouse industry and the, the picking and packing industry. Slips, trips, and falls, repetitive processes, moving bulky items, the aging workforce, and sometimes it's just bad luck. Uh, a box falls on your, on your uh, shoulder or on your knee or on your foot. Sometimes it just happens. Next slide. So what prolongs return to work? Um, there are several factors. One is inflammation, which is pain and swelling. Another is loss of range of motion due to muscle guarding and joint restrictions. Loss of muscle strength due to muscle injury and damage or inhibition. Nerve irritation. Time. All injuries need time to heal. Treatment provided can positively or negatively affect the recovery time needed. And then there are biopsychosocial factors. Different ways of dealing with pain and tolerance. Fear of pain or re-injury. Personal experiences and beliefs and job satisfaction. Next slide. Unpacking physical therapy. What, is, what, do, what do a lot of these terms mean that you hear on a, on a regular basis? Therapeutic exercise. It's targeted exercises to address limitations found during an evaluation. Specific individualized program developed for each employee and a home exercise program is always indicated and given to each employee. Therapeutic activities. These are functional activities that, that are job, job sim, simulation in nature. Uh, examples of this would be lifting, carrying, whoops, I lost my 
there you go. Lifting, carrying, and pushing and pulling. Uh, modalities, uh, heat and cold, electrical stimulation, iontophoresis, ultrasound. These, are, uh, these modalities help to increase or decrease blood flow in an area and control pain and inflammation. And then manual therapy, the topic that we're, we're talking about today is a hands-on treatment by the, by the therapist to improve joint and soft tissue mobility. And remember that most of these treatments are utilized, uh, uh, are, uh, most of these treatments utilize all or several of these interven interventions during one treatment session. Next slide. So what does a typical therapy visit look like? Uh, it might start with a warm-up. Uh, we may use modalities to improve blood flow and decrease pain, or we might, we might use a light cardiovascular workout on the exercise bike or a treadmill. That might lead into a manual therapy technique. Um, if manual therapy is indicated, it may, be, it may become before the warm-up, but likely, uh, likely after the warm-up and before activities. Therapeutic exercises, again, are targeted exercises to address range of motion and strength limitations. And therapeutic activities are those functional exercises that simulate job actions, uh, for example, lifting, carrying, pushing, pulling, and climbing. And then we always finish with education. Um, always give the patient a home exercise program uh, that may include proper body mechanics um, and certain um, therapeutic exercises that they can do at home. Uh, we may also instruct them in self-care uh, activities for pain and inflammation. Uh, and the most important thing is mobility. Keep moving between sessions. Next slide. So what does, ther what does manual therapy mean? The definition of manual, ther manual therapy is the use of skilled hands-on treatment to facilitate the movement of joint and soft tissue. So there, are, I listed four uh, types of manual therapy techniques that you will typically see during a session. Uh, the first is joint mobilization, and that's when the therapist will push the joint through the available range of motion. Joint manipulation is when we take that joint to the end of its range and then a quick thrust technique afterwards. This is where you hear the cavitation or the pop in the joint that you would typically experience with an osteopathic or a chiropractic type of manipulation. Soft tissue mobilization is similar to deep tissue massage, but it's used to break up adhesions and decrease muscle guarding. And then lastly is uh, manual exercise facilitation, using hands-on cues and palpating motion to ensure proper completion of the exercise. Next slide. Manual therapy addresses the common symptoms of joint and soft tissue restrictions, all of which can result in delays in return to work. So what do we typically see when we're performing a manual therapy technique? It may do, be due to muscle guarding, pain and inflammation, muscle inhibition, nerve sensitivity and irritation like a sciatica, blood flow restrictions, and joint mobility limitations. Next slide. So what can manual therapy do for those conditions? It can cause a relaxation effect to reduce muscle guarding. It can release pain inhibiting chemicals in the body. It can uh, cause muscles to contract normally, improving strength. It can improve blood flow to nerves and, eliminate, and elimination of nerve restriction points. It can improve blood flow to the injured area, which improves and speeds healing. And it can improve joint motion, resulting in improved ability for the body to move normally. Manual therapy is almost never used as a standalone intervention. Therapeutic exercises, especially a home exercise program, are issued to ensure follow-through of the manual therapy techniques. Next slide. There's four reasons that we want to talk about uh, that ma why manual therapy is effective. Again, we talked about some of these already, but Let's go into a little bit more detail. Manual therapy lessens muscle guarding. Muscle response to pain and inflammation by tightening around a restricted joint in an act of self-protection. So many times we hear, I'll turn my phone off during the pre regular presentation so it doesn't ring. Um, a lot of times when someone injures uh, a body part, the muscles will tighten around it 
to protect you from moving further so that you don't re-injure or continue to do harm to the joint. That's just a, a protection technique that our body has. Manual therapy can improve, improve muscle strength. Muscles seek to self-protect to prevent stress and pain and become guarded around the restricted joint. This makes normal work and full capacity difficult, if not impossible. And we typically see somebody walking into our center that's moving uh, very, very, in a very limited fashion, very tight and almost robotic in nature. Uh, number three, manual therapy reduces nerve sensitivity and nerve irritation. When a joint's restricted, nerve sensitivity to pain shoots up and the nerve irritation soars, sending pain traveling to other body parts. An example of this would be a nerve that's injured in the low back is irritated and it will travel down the leg uh, in the back of the leg into the bottom of the lower part of the leg. That's called sciatica. Many of us have experienced that ourselves or have seen other family members go through this and it's very painful. And then lastly, manual therapy increases function and promotes earlier return to work. So by restore, restoring normal muscle activity and decreasing nerve irritation, manual therapy can rehabilitate uh, a body unable to move correctly into one that moves flexibly and comfortably when performing normal activities. Next slide. Why does this all matter? When we look at the, uh, the uh, injury facts from the National Safety Council, we see some numbers that are, are pretty uh, out astounding. Uh, number one, each total claim cost on each injured worker costs about $41,000. We typically see about 103 million days per year of lost productivity at a total cost of about $170 billion to the, to the employer industry in terms of, of dollars uh, spent on administrative costs, lost in wage productivity, and in medical costs. And you'll typically see that if you lump the, whoops, if you lump the first two together, administrative costs and loss of productivity, that's typically referred to as indemnity. And that's always the, uh, the most expensive part of managing and treating a claim. Next slide. Early intervention. Uh, Concentra's model is one of an early intervention, function-based, active, hands-on approach. Research shows, and it's very clear, that early intervention improves recovery time for musculoskeletal injuries. In addition, early intervention therapy has shown to decrease total health care costs, opioid use, numbers of injections, and diagnostic imaging. So we typically see a focus on ability or function versus disability or pain and limitation. Active treatment and therapy keeps people focused on function, and that's our whole purpose. Next slide. Early intervention manual therapy uh, is the most effective in acute injuries. The, the body is typically forced to move sooner than it would on its own. Acutely, injured tissues respond faster to treatment. It prevents secondary problems from occurring in terms, in terms of compensations, improper tissue healing, and muscle at atrophy. So a key point to remember is early intervention with appropriate treatments such as manual therapy increases the likelihood of earlier and safer return to work. And that's what we all want for our patients and our, our workforce. Next slide. So let's, let's go into a, a case study. Um, you can see a, a, an example here of, a, of an, an individual that is lifting some boxes and develops uh, severe low back pain uh, at work. So let's go to the next slide. We're going to talk about kind of some of the, the findings, and then how we're going to treat this individual. So a physical exam reveals 9 out of 10 pain, a stage 1 or 20% uh, uh, achievement of the fresh scale, 90% lumbar spine range of motion reduction, normal x-rays, a significant decrease in the ability to lift, carry, and push and pull. They meet all the PT uh, referral criteria and are referred to therapy the same day. The PT eval reveals a mechanism of injury and clinical findings consistent with lumbar facet restriction. 
So the treatment would typically be a joint m manipulation of the lumbar spine, education and home exercise program with a, fo uh, a focus on mobility exercises on that very first visit. When they would come back a couple of days later for the second visit, the patient typically in this scenario achieved a 80% improvement in their pain. Their fresh uh, score went up to a stage four or 80% um, ability to perform essential functions. Exercises were progressed. Lumbar hip and strengthening uh, were started, and uh, functional training was initiated. On the third visit, uh, the patient comes in, they're pain-free. Uh, the fresh score is at 90%, full range of motion. Uh, they progress to all of their essential uh, job functions, uh, and we evaluate them for a return to work, send them over to the physician, and they're returned back to work after three to four visits. So if we go to the next slide, we can kind of see the, the timeline of what, we, of what we discussed. And the, the, the key part here is that if you look at the official disability guidelines, or ODG, which we, we typically hear a lot about, uh, state that the recovery time for a lumbar sprain or strain of this severity would be about 10 visits. Due to the appropriate use of manual therapy, in this case, we reduced it to three visits before the employee is discharged to regular duty. So the, the key points to remember here are that by properly evaluating underlying dysfunction, it allows for specific treatment techniques to be applied in a timely manner. This allows earlier and more pain-free range of motion and strengthening. We're able to start job-specific tasks earlier in the treatment cycle. Next slide. And if we have time, which I think we do, uh, we'll go into a second case study. So in this particular uh, example, an employee hurts his ankle after stepping down from a ladder at work. Next slide. Physical exam reveals swelling, loss of range of motion, loss of strength, abnormal gait pattern due to limited tolerance of weight bearing, normal x-ray. Since this was a musculoskeletal injury that required work restrictions, the patient was referred to therapy immediately. The PT verified the doctor's findings and also found an acute joint restriction of the muscle joints in the foot and the ankle, specifically the talocural, subtalar, and distal tib-fib joint. The PT performed a joint manipulation of all three joints after confirming the ligaments were intact. The patient demonstrated immediate improvement in range of motion and Pain, uh, and pain, and a home exercise program was issued to maintain joint mobility. On the next visit, the patient demonstrated almost normal gait pattern, near full range of motion and strength, minimal swelling and pain. The joint mobility uh, was significantly improved, but joint manipulation was utilized again to ensure normal joint mobility. Exercise were progressed to strengthening, including weight-bearing activities. At the third visit, the patient was presented with normal gait, full range of motion, and strength and only experienced pain when going up and down steps. Exercises were progressed further to include walking on the treadmill, climbing a ladder, and steps and lifting and carrying. Manual therapy was not necessary due to normal joint mobility. At the fourth visit, all goals were met. The patient was discharged from PT to regular duty. A diagnosis of ankle sprain can often take two to four weeks to complete resolution, but with the application of manual therapy, uh, it quickly restores joint mobility, and he was discharged in eight calendar days. Next slide. Again, here is the, here's the typical, typical guideline, and uh, the point here is that we intervened early, avoiding bracing, non-weight-bearing gait progression that leads to swelling and joint dysfunction. By maintaining weight-bearing, we uh, prevent loss of mechanoreceptor mechano function and retraining um, and save several uh, visits in the process. Next slide. So what are the key takeaways? Manual therapy is one of the multiple treatments a physical therapist will use as appropriate and allowed by state practice acts. Concentra's early intervention model Focusing on function and active hands-on therapy utilizes manual therapy to accelerate recovery time, achieve earlier return to work, and help reduce workers' compensation costs through earlier case closure 
that leads, uh, that leads to less need for diagnostic imaging, prescription, and injections. And with that, I will open it up to Q&A.